Coming up, testing has started on Magic Bands for annual pass holders. Universal releases new details on the Wizarding World of Harry Potter expansion. And SeaWorld reports good numbers for their fourth quarter. Plus, John and Kevin share their experience having lunch with an animal expert at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. All that coming up. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode number 673 for the week of January 28th, 2014. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, I am your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends John Magi, Kevin Close, Kathy Whirling, Corey Martin, and, of course, back in the production nook, our producer, Dustin West, along with associate producers Sean Thompson and Craig Williams. And uh, I am, uh, for those of you watching live on video, I'm wearing my uh, Google Glass, my new version of Google Glass. And I'm doing this because uh, I want you guys to tweet me during the show because they'll show up in this. It's at Pete Werner uh, on Twitter. And if I see something that I want to talk about or I want to mention, I will. I will. I don't have to look at my screen. I can just look right at the camera and see tweets as they come up. And, uh, and if you wink, you're taking a photo. <laughs> yeah, I can do that, too. I can do that, too, now. <laughs> I just took a picture. Let me do that again. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> no, that doesn't actually work. It does. It does. The new Watch version, it. you can wink and take a photo. I did not know that. Why is it not working? But you have to wink like Marilyn Monroe. Up and up. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Keep you have to that. calibrate it. it I only looks have a, to have a seizure. It today. only looks a little like you're having a stroke. <laughs> it's, it's, actually, it, it's been working this entire time. Oh, okay. For some reason, it's not working right Anyone now. Anyone have a pencil? Um, All right, just a couple things in housekeeping. want to remind everyone to please go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a link to it in our show notes page, disunplugged.com. Especially uh, right now, uh, Craig and Sean did an amazing job. We're going to talk a little bit about it in a few minutes, but they did an amazing job covering uh, this weekend's uh, Harry Potter extravaganza over at Universal. And... uh, I think you put up like 16 videos the first hour. 16 or 17 <laughs> videos? Around that. You know, a little bit. It's crazy. Crazy. Ah. So, oh, a tweet has just come in. <laughs> um, but I can't say it. That's weird. Okay. Um, it's Kevin. What are you tweeting him? Oh, Mike Holland is saying, nice new Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so on our YouTube channel, um, amazing videos, the Q&A with a lot of the cast members from... Uh, The Harry Potter films, uh, a lot of details on the Diagon Alley expansion of the Wizarding World that is set to open this summer. And, uh, of course, uh, Sean and Craig are going to be doing another one of their very popular, very well-received Universal shows. They're actually recording it right after this, but they're not going out live in spite of me saying I think it would be a great idea if they did. So you should really send them emails at Sean at www.info.com and Craig at www.info.com and tell them how much you would love it if they would take this amazing new show and go out live. No, we're not that funny in person. We have to put the jokes in after. (laughs) I think we should post their telephone numbers. We can do that, too. I'll have Dustin do up below a third. Yeah, sure. With their phone numbers on it. Fantastic. But, uh, so, yeah, please go out to our YouTube channel and subscribe to get notified when all these great videos go up. Also want to remind everyone about our the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplug. goes up every Thursday with host Tom Bell and his team. In this week's show, Michael Bowling looks forward to Disneyland's 60th anniversary with a look back at, fil- at the film's Mary Poppins and Saving Mr. Banks and their effect on Disneyland. Plus, Tom Bell and Sean Thompson chat with hipster Mickey artist Jared Maruyama. Maruyama, yeah. Maruyama. So, that coming up Thursday on the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. And uh, while we're plugging stuff, uh, the Welcome Center, the DizBoards.com Welcome Center, <laughs> located in Port Can- uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida, 6550 North Atlantic Avenue in uh, Cape Canaveral. Uh, stop by and visit us. Teresa's always out there, and sometimes some of us are out there, too, and 
Come out and say hello. If you're a Dreams Unlimited Travel client, we have a special gift for you when you come in. If you're not a Dreams Unlimited Travel client, you'll be chastised. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 6550 North Atlantic Avenue, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Um, can't miss it. Big Dreams Unlimited disboards.com sign out there. It's really cool. So uh, <clears throat> we also want to mention the upcoming meets for uh, Give Kids the World. Um, North Texas, uh, Fort Worth on uh, March 22nd. The New Jersey meet, where registration is now open for that, uh, April 25th through the 27th. And, uh, of course, the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania meet, the Hershey Park meet, uh, June 13th through the 15th. The uh, Indiana, uh, Indianapolis meet, uh, September 6th. And the New England meet, uh, October 3rd through the 5th. And there are some other ones that are being worked on. We're waiting on dates, but... It's all to raise money for Give Kids the World. It's a great time. I will be there for these, and so will many members of the team. We'll be doing a show, a live show from each of these uh, locations, as we do all the time, and trying to raise as much money as we can this year for Give Kids the World. So come out and support us if you're in any of those cities or nearby or within a good drive. Come on. Oh, and Nova Scotia. We Mm -hmm. forgot to put Nova Scotia in here. That's uh, August. I want to say August 8th, but don't quote me on that. It should be on the... Show notes yeah, page. We'll have it there. Can we make a request? <clears throat> sure. I'd like to have a meet in Palm Springs. I saw a show about it on TV the other day, and I really would like to do that. <laughs> so Palm prob- Springs, California. We could probably make that happen. Make it happen. I would love to see a meet in California. Would so love Palm to Springs, see a meet in California. Be specific. So, or Palm Springs. Okay. Um, well, you could just like, go to the meet and then shoot down to Palm Springs. And my, you know, it's funny. Google Glass isn't picking up these tweets, but my phone is. It's my back pocket, and my butt is vibrating like crazy. <laughs> um, and no jokes. Um, I have to put this back here. Excuse me. Because it's really distracting. Um, so, yeah, great meets coming up uh, again this year to help raise money for Give Kids the World. And if you're not familiar with Give Kids the World, uh, check out their website. We'll make sure we put a link to that in the show notes page as well so you can see the amazing work. These folks do uh, helping bring children with life-threatening illnesses down to uh, down to Orlando, and uh, so that is what I have in housekeeping. Anybody else? I do. I have a big announcement. Okay. This is for our February backstage magic group. We have signed a special guest, Margaret Carey. Will be joining us at the Tama Shanter Inn for lunch. She is the person uh, Disney used to model Tinker Bell. Oh, cool. So she will be signing autographs and taking pictures and talking to our guests. So we're very proud of that. We're very happy. Margaret's 85 and loves the Disney community. So she's very excited to meet all of us. Awesome. That's neat. Hmm. Very excited. Very excited to hear about uh, how that goes. Since I will not be on the, the February trip. But that should be fun. Anything else in housekeeping? I don't Anyone? have anything. I know we got a lot of news stories. My house is clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you can come clean mine now. Um, I know we have a lot of news stories. We do. We have a lot of information. So you let's ready? go right to it. Johnny. All right. Our first news story. Nocturne Alley, an escape from Gringotts, announced in Universal Harry Potter expansion. Universal Orlando announced details, including the name of its new multidimensional thrill ride for its Harry Potter Diagon... Diagon Alley expansion last week. Universal did not mention an opening date for the expansion, just saying that it is set to open sometime this summer. In a live webcast, Universal gave the first look into the Hogwarts Express train that will move guests between Universal Islands of Adventure at Hogsmeade Station to London's King's Cross Station inside Universal Studios. Those who have a park-to-park pass can experience the views of London and the British countryside using the train. This is interesting because this is the first time we've actually heard about this. You will have to have a two-park pass. Yeah. I also well, We also kind of figured that was yeah, going to be. We did, but there was a lot of speculation on what were they going to do, turn people away. So now it's sort of confirmed that you have to have a two-park pass. I also heard that if you have a one-day, like or a one-park pass, that they're going to have like a booth there, an option for you to upgrade Upsell. right there and not send you to the front of the park. That's smart. The brand-new ride... Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts will put riders in the middle of an adventure through Gringotts bank vaults. It's one of the most incredible experiences we've ever created, said President of Universal Creative Mike Woodbur- or Mark Woodbury. 
when you saw the pictures, you knew right away this was a ride waiting to happen. Uh, oh, so- yeah, absolutely. I don't remember the scene, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, it's absolutely. I mean, that would be crazy for them not to make a ride out of it. I have a vision of standing in line and not having the right form and <laughs> not having the right ID. And yet, <laughs> all the pens are all the pens belted are run down out the table. And, yeah. Six new shops will open their doors to park goers, including Ollivanders, makers of fine wands since 382 BC, mm-hmm. where guests can, quote, experience the magic of a wand choosing a wizard. Mm-hmm. Here's Pete's wand. <laughs> With an odd hand in it. <laughs> it's very nice. It's very Dunis from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> Not everything within Harry Potter is happy, according to Universal, so discover the darker side of magic in Nocturne Alley. It features Borgen and Burks, a shop specializing in the dark arts that will offer a wide variety of dark objects, such as Death Eater masks, skulls, and other sinister items. Other shops include Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, novelty items, magical jokes, and toys, Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions, a variety of wizard wear from Hogwarts school uniforms, ties, scarves, and jumpers. So in other words, let's open one attraction and 72 stores. (laughs) (laughs) Which apparently sells everything from... You know, magic trips to underwear. Now, you know magic what? Uh, I'm, I'm Look, brilliant. Brilliant. You know what? It's <coughs> really good. They needed to do this. This was my big complaint with Wizarding World uh, when it opened that, you know, they were calling it a theme park within a theme park. And you get there and it's basically the size of a small parking lot. Um, and so the expansion is good. I think they've picked the right parts of the Harry Potter universe to focus on with it. Um, let's hope they uh, open this one better than they opened the last one. And some of the best merchandise around can be found at these uh, yeah, the World of Harry Potter. They've got some great merchandise. They really do. They really like do. Quality Quidditch supplies. A wide assortment <laughs> of apparel and equipment, including Quidditch sweaters, brooms, golden snitches, bludgers, bludger bats, quaffles, and more, Kevin. See? Ooh, quaffles. Ah. <laughs> I want a gift certificate for Christmas. <laughs> I like my quaffles with... Uh, syrup <laughs> and raspberries chicken. and chicken. Chicken and quaffles. Um, there's also announced uh, some uh, food establishments. Uh, there's going to be traditional British items at the Leaky Cauldron, uh, mm-hmm. which include fish and chips and bangers and mash. There's also an ice cream parlor that I cannot pronounce the name of. Guests can try unique flavors such as strawberry and peanut butter ice cream. Those are unique. They are very unique. <laughs> Not separately. That's all guys mixed together. Strawberry. Oh, who, and who knows butter. what they're going to do. Butter beer ice cream or something. Oh, that would be great. I mean, this is Butter beer is delicious. I'm it sorry. Is. But, you know, I love, you know, their, this is their BS marketing. When they opened up uh, Wizarding World and they said, oh, uh, butter beer has no more sugar than a glass of orange juice, which is all sugar. Right. It's all sugar. And then, you know, we're not allowed to have uh, Coca-Cola or any soft drinks because, you know, J.K. Rowling is so against uh, children having all this sugar, and yet the biggest store in the place is a candy store. Right. Um, so I've just got to point that out. You know, as with all things, you know, we're excited when something new comes to to Orlando. We think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna be exciting. Again, was a, Harry Potter was never my thing, but there's so many people who enjoy it. So I think it's gonna be cool. And nothing is better than expanding that area of the park. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. No, absolutely. And and. I'm glad they're doing it. Uh, no question that for Universal, at least, the opening of Wizarding World was a game changer. I think this one will be as well. And honestly, I think uh, Disney's dropping a couple of crab cakes in their shorts uh, over this. This is a big. This is a big expansion. This is a big, big expansion. And that was they, a SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> reference. <laughs> no, actually, it was a crab Billy. Cr- it's a Billy Crystal Mr. Saturday Night reference, but you know. Whatever, um, the, uh, the what Disney is going to do to respond to this, I don't know. Um, but when you've got Comcast saying we're we're going to pump uh, half a billion dollars a year for at least the next four, three or four years into Universal, um, you know Disney can't afford to not respond to it. They can't afford to not respond to it. And I, I you know, I really don't know if Avatar Land is going to be enough. And we can't forget about Cabana Bay either. There was, you know, they're expanding into four resorts now. Did you guys get a chance to drive past? And yeah, it looks great. It? Yeah. it is 
I, I can't. It looks like a Vegas casino. It looks like a Vegas. Soviet housing complex. Yes. But I mean, as far as size. <laughs> Soviet housing it complex. Like, <laughs> but as far as size goes, it's, it's it, like the entire highway. Well, it's how many? It's 1,800 rooms or something? I mean, it's massive. It's, it's a lot. And um, it's... It's almost done at this point. I mean, it opens up in uh, the first part of it opens up in uh, late March. I think March 31st is the opening date on that. And apparently the rooms that are opening up have already been done for months at this point. So they're they're coming along with it. But it's just going to be ridiculously large. They have the Lazy River, a 10-lane bowling alley. Uh, Some of the signs have gone up, like the huge marquee, like in the center of the resort. It looks great. It's all like 60s themed. It's kind of that cool, like retro colors. It's really nice. All right, so apparently the only people capable of tweeting me during a live show are Mike Holland and Jack Bergen. Come on, people. <laughs> Come on, add people Pete Warner. Can I just jump in back for one second? And just, no one's going to understand this except one person. Marilyn, I did this for you. That's it. I apologize. Okay. There you go. Hi, Marilyn. <laughs> Hi. Um, is there, was there any news about the bridge over the... Troubled water. No, troubled water. No, but there's signs in the area that I think starting February 2nd, there's going to be uh, road closures at some points on the road where the bridge will be. So, All right, just be specific about what we're talking so people who don't know what we're... There was we're... a news story a couple of months ago that um, Universal put in uh, permits to build a walkway over the uh, roadway that goes... That That's right, they wanted tax dollars property. to pay mm-hmm. for it. They wanted tax yep. dollars to yep. pay for it, and there was a lot of... Back and forth of well, could they do it? Should they do it? Shouldn't they do it? But it looks like they got approval and they're going to go ahead with it I to connect if... the Cabana Resort to property. To well, and I, I also want to remind everybody that with the opening of Cabana Bay, this will be the one resort on Universal property that will not have Express Pass access to the attractions. So you need to be mindful of that. That you know where you do get Express Pass with your room key at uh, Portofino Bay, Hard Rock, and Royal Pacific. That is not going to be the case at Cabana Bay. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, one of the reasons, I guess, they're kind of justifying a lower price point <coughs> at that resort. But we'll see how low that price point gets. If that thing is, if that thing is getting 90, 95% occupancy, that price point is not going to be low. Yeah, I know they released a, uh, a rate for Florida residents in like April to May. And the standard rooms, not the suites, are going for $98. So that's Well, the not- rooms, like. They're almost down to Sand Lake Road. I mean, it's a big place. Yeah, it, it's yeah. huge. And I, I assume they're going to offer transportation. Uh, yeah, they'll have um, buses that will take people over to City Walk in the parks, but then they will have the walkway, too, that they're... Will they have the rickshaws? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Corey but... will study that to find out, because Corey loves <laughs> rickshaws. Not if, it, not if it's on public roads. They're not allowed. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true. In Orlando, they are. In Orlando, they are. I think that's going to have a major impact on the, uh, the hotels in the iDrive area. I think they're really, they're probably going to be concerned about this. I don't, uh, look, we're not talking about enough hotel rooms here to impact that. Um, You know, it's different when Disney opens up Pop Century or All Star and we're talking about three, four, five thousand rooms in a block coming online. That has an impact. But I think, I think you might have some hotels in the iDrive area, in the Universal area that will be impacted. But I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be the kind of, Routing that the hotels get every time Disney opens a new value resort, um, but we'll see. We'll see. I could be wrong. So back no, to I'm the not. the new construction. Since I'm not a up on all the Harry Potter stuff, and when they opened the first part, I watched the first movie. Is there a book or a movie I should watch to appreciate now what they're doing in this new area? You should watch all of them. Well, definitely the first, I think, uh, for the Diagon Alley stuff. I think that's the most... Because I don't remember any of that in the first Kathy, one. Kathy, start with Disney movies. If you have not <laughs> seen the Disney movies, that's where your, your homework should begin. Well, stay on, stay on John. Stay on John. This is from Teresa on... Uh, on Twitter, she said, poke John with the tiny hands. So maybe you have to follow people back for, for it to come through your Google Glass. Oh, I don't know. So go follow everybody. Really? All right. <laughs> Moving on to our second news story SeaWorld boasts record attendance. U.S. operations. U.S. attractions operator SeaWorld Entertainment achieved a record year in 2013, driven by strong attendance growth in its SeaWorld-branded parks in Orlando, San Diego, and San Antonio. Total revenues for the group 
which also owns the Bush Gardens and Sesame Place Leisure Brands, is expected to reach a record $1.46 billion in fiscal 2013. We're very pleased with our fourth quarter performance, particularly for the SeaWorld branded parks in Orlando and San Diego, which helped us to achieve record revenue for the year, said Jim Atchison, president and chief executive officer of the company. In addition to the great holiday events that proved so popular in December, we have launched our year-long celebration of SeaWorld's 50th anniversary. The success of SeaWorld's parks in 2013 suggests that the extraordinary experience offered in these parks is is as meaningful today as at any point in our history. SeaWorld expects to release its audited 2013 results in March. And, you know, of course, the real story is going to be what are the first quarter uh, earnings going to Mm -hmm. look like after that'll be the first quarter, the first full quarter for them after the Blackfish controversy. And we'll get a chance to see how many people it has, you know, if it has scared anybody away from going into the parks or if they're not going to feel it financially. I think they are going to feel it. I think the first quarter is going to show it. I think the second quarter is going to show it. But um, that's what I'm that's what I'm waiting for. I want to see those. I want to see those uh, those first quarter numbers when they come out and uh, see how they do. Ex trainers have come out and made a video of their own, stating that that's the stuff is not categorically true. Yeah, it's in, kind of in, well, even there, right. There's an agenda there, and yeah. they're pushing an agenda. And Don Branchow's family officially came mm-hmm. out as well, saying that uh, they're. Uh, People portrayed in the Blackfish movie as trainers are not. Right. They're actually film crew. Wow. Do you think that the majority of people who go to SeaWorld are aware of this issue? That Has this crossed people's radar? I think the amount of attention this has gotten at this point, yeah, I think it has reached a, a, a mass market audience in terms of you know, at least the talking points behind the film and, and what, they're, what they're saying, I think that has reached a lot of people. Um, whether or not it is enough to stop people from, you know, going into the parks, I don't know. I don't know. It, you know, it, it's, it remains to be seen. I know it's, you know, certainly not going to stop me. Um, I would like to revisit this conversation when we talk about our lunch with an animal expert. Okay. Sure. Some interesting things came up there. Oh, good. Good. All right. So we'll keep an eye on SeaWorld's fiscal report. And our final news story, Give Kids the World gets major facelift. Give Kids the World, a Florida resort that helped more than 127,000 children with a life-threatening illness, has a new look, which was revealed on Good Morning America. Mickey Mouse uh, greeted... Uh, Pamela Lanworth, the CEO of Give Kids the World, at the front door of the resort as she held hand, her hands over her mouth in shock while fighting back tears. Quote, this is beyond my wildest expect- expectations, she said, commenting on an intricate mural of a family with his, on, I'm sorry, commenting on an intricate mural of a father with his two small children comprised of 400 images of the resort's patients, their families and volunteers. Visitors, not patients. Uh, visitors, their families and volunteers who work tirelessly every day to make this place so magical for all its visitors. Um, for 25 years, Give Kids the World Village, a 70-acre property in Kissimmee, has been dispensing hope, love, and joy to sick children in the form of free, week-long fantasy vacations. When the resort found itself in need of help, Good Morning America turned to Extreme Home, Extreme Makeover Home Edition host Ty Pennington. Pennington and, and his team, and you know, the Walt Disney World construction team, targeted the Memory Makers Building, the resort's volunteer center, for a facelift. Wyndham Vacation Ownership Company renovated most of the resort's 146 villas. West Elm donated furniture and accessories. And GAF provided roofing. The design took 600 hours. After a month-long demolition, the result of thousands of hours of work was unveiled. Wishes really do come true, Pennington told Lanworth before escorting her into yet another room marked with special surprise touches. A new recreation room was also unveiled with framed handwritten letters on the wall from patients and families who had experienced the healing powers of Kids the World. Uh... 
when the celebrity chef, Emeril Lagasse, heard about the organization's mission, he, he said... Bam. <laughs> <laughs> that he, too, had to be part of the surprise. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so inspired being here, Lagasse explained. It's unbelievable. And again, you know, I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, these we raise money at our at our Diz Meets uh, for Give Kids the World. I really encourage people to go out to their website, uh, uh, gktw.org, uh, givekidstheworld.org, uh, and take a look at what they uh, at what they're doing. And if you're not familiar with the organization, it is such an amazing uh, organization. It is also rated the top charity in the United States in terms of how it's run. Um, 95 percent, 95 cents out of every dollar that is raised by Give Kids the World goes directly to the mission. It's only a 5 percent overhead for administrative costs and fundraising, uh, which is a real testament to Pamela Lanworth, who mm-hmm. is the CEO and the amazing job she and her team do, do running that. They turn no child away. And just so people understand where Give Kids the World kind of fits in the mix, because some people, I think, get the idea that they compete with Make-A-Wish, and that's not the case. When a child, ha- when a make, make when a wish child asked to go to Disney World, make a wish calls, give kids the world. And they work with a lot of wish granting organizations and they, they pride themselves on turning no one away. Even if the, uh, the village is full, they have uh, arrangements with area hotels mm-hmm. uh, to send these kids and their families. Uh, they turn no one away. Do you know that Pamela Landworth, when you make a donation and you get that letter back, do you know that she hand signs every letter? I don't doubt it for a second. She has, they were telling the last time we were down there, she has a stash of purple pens. And whenever she gets a chance, she signs the letters. She signed letters when she's on the treadmill, but she personally thanks everybody that yeah. donates. No, she's amazing. She's amazing. And to see her on that when they showed this and to see her so touched, because we've seen her. And she is an emotional person, but she was almost like a basket Well, case. she's usually she was, the one making everybody else cry. Yeah, right, exactly, with right. her story. She, so it was really nice that somebody else made her cry. You could see just how genuine it was that she really did care. Oh, no, there's no question. And, I, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of, of, of meeting her and spending some time with her. And there's no doubt this woman is a thousand percent the real, the real article. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's so genuine about this. Her dad and started this, and she's following. no. It was her husband? Mm-hmm. Oh, was it? She I was apologize. married to Harry, uh, Harry, uh, Henry Lenworth. Uh, that was her husband. Um, My apologies, so. I had it wrong. But uh, yeah, and you, and you know that princess. Remember when we went to the gala year before last, mm-hmm. and they had the the princess girl come out that when she was small she was there. Yeah, and she came out on stage. She was ABC's Person of the Week. Oh wow! Representing Give Kids the World last. Oh, week. that's awesome. That's awesome. A lot of great stories. A lot of great stories come out of Give Kids the World Village. If you're not familiar with it, please, uh, like I said, we'll keep a a link on the show notes page, uh, Mm disunplugged.com. But it's gktw.org, givekidstheworld.org, and you can learn more about them. And support them in any way you can, please. So, great story, and I'm happy that they got a chance to do it. All All right. right. That'll do it for the news. Thank you, John. We're going to move on to rapid fire. And we haven't heard enough from John, so let's go to John. Okay, more about me. Um, I have a couple of stories about magic bands and my magic plus. And let me see if I can sort of put this in a nutshell. Um, As of right now, um, guests staying at all Walt Disney World Resort hotels will now receive a a magic band. No more give. uh, No more key to the world cards. Uh, everyone's getting that magic band to use as a room key through their stay. Um, if you haven't, if people haven't done it in advance, you're going to get it at the front desk. You won't have a chance to actually uh, pick out a color. That's only done if you're part of the pre-arrival check-in test. But now everyone's getting a magic band um, and your theme park admission tickets and touch to pay and all that good stuff will be on the Magic Band and Fast Pass Plus as well. The other story pertaining to my Magic Plus and Fast Pass Plus is that now Walt Disney World annual pass holders are being selected for a test. Uh, these individuals are given instructions to add their annual pass ID number to their My Magic My Disney Experience app or website and they can begin making Fast Pass Plus reservations and order mo- order customized Magic Bands. Um, blah, 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 blah. Like all the Walt Disney World Park guests, blah, blah, blah. 
pass holders can make up to three Fast Pass Plus selections in one park per day. The difference for pass holders is that they are only allowed to hold a maximum of seven days worth of Fast Pass Plus reservations at any, any given time during a 60 day rolling window. Unless, of course, they're staying at a Disney hotel. Uh, when you use one of your days, another day of eligibility is opened up for you. Okay, so you can only have seven days worth of fast passes in a 60 day window. Okay, so if I use them for a week, I can't do it again for no, another no, seven days. No, no, they don't want day. you hoarding. Every day, Sorry. when you use one and dra- it drops off, up. another day ends up oh, at the okay. end. They're okay. just trying to avoid people booking 60 days straight mm-hmm. of right. fast, pass fast passes. Okay, because you know people, there are people yeah, that of will course. absolutely do it. Too. Now, we had a different opinion this time. We had a friend in town, and she is a frequent visitor to Walt Disney World and usually for long periods of time and she's very unhappy with this and the reason she's unhappy is she said they haven't considered me at all I am a re-rider I get off and get my fast pass I get back on and get my fast pass she said I like to re-ride and this doesn't allow for that she said also I am well I mean you can also just wait in the standby line she said standby lines for rides like pirates she found during the week she was here, 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. She That's said, crazy. She said, I'm not going to wait 90, 90 minutes. 90 minutes for Pirates. And no. She explained Small what world. happened. They had two entrances to Pirates. <laughs> there were two lines. Well, they've now um, given one to Fast Pass Plus. Correct. So the entire standby line now has to go in one entrance. So instead of dividing into two and making it half as long, the, f- the people that are w- using Fast Pass Plus to get into Pirates walk right on. The other folks now have a 90-minute wait. That's She's one of these people, too, who likes the details of Disney, all the little nuances and stuff. Right. And she said, so what happens now is I would ride Pirates and walk in on one side and look at all of the details of the queue and then take Pirates again later in the day and look at all the other details on the other side. He said, now I can't. Mm-hmm. I she don't have that option. That's she's always amazing. described Walt Disney World as her park of choice. And she now states that she doesn't know that she would even come back. She well, thinks going to Disneyland is a better option until they start changing that's, that also. Wow. Especially from her. That's there, There's no doubt that this whole thing has um, is thrown a wrench in a system of how people visit. Now, is Disney going to adapt to people or do people have to adapt to this? And that's where where, where is going to be that? Where do we meet in the middle on this so people are happy? Yeah, I the part that I don't like about all of this is, you know, the you always had fast passes in the in the past that if you chose to go to those rides fine but now everything is a fast pass so what do you do if you pick your three but there's other rides you want to do now you're stuck waiting in a long line where there didn't used to be a long line because of that what happens if you're here with a family and you have a little child who rides a ride for the first time and says that was fantastic let's do it again Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, I, I'm just I'm taking a look at the my Disney Experience app on my phone. Um, right now, it's two thirty in the afternoon on a Tuesday, and the wait time for Pirates is ten minutes. Um, so you know, and that's consistent with what I would expect in January. Well, I had a friend um, who was here on Saturday, and it was fifty five minutes at Pirates. Well, yeah, on a Saturday, yeah. Um, but I, I think it backs up now more than it would have yes. otherwise. But you know, and I would say. If you haven't done it, everybody needs to set up their My Disney experience because that's how you get fast passes now. And, you know, you can set it up when you get there, but you're ahead of the game if you've got your account set up before you get here. I also understand there are lines at It's a Small World. Always, mm-hmm. though. I mean, especially on, and you know. I mean, I, I, there's always some kind of wait at Small World. Not long, usually. Well, when, I was just going to say, I usually just walk okay. right on. When we were there, like, two Fridays ago with my grandson, we had fast passes for that. But um, the line for It's a Small World was out the gate and out into the park area. And the fast pass line, we walked all the way down to the boats. So, you know, you'd think they could figure that out a little better so that I mean, it's nice we had a fast pass and we walked right down, but if you didn't have a fast pass, you were stuck standing in yeah. that line. Okay. So there's some changes coming along. Looks like there's 
tweaking and adjusting happening as well. I just want to point out one more thing about the cards at the resorts. Um, if you're staying at Disney's Fort Wilderness Campground and uh, if you're at a concierge level room, in addition to your uh, magic band, you are going to get a card to access certain areas mm -hmm. that just don't aren't ac accessible by the band yet. So that's that. And I would say if you're in Magic Kingdom and you want to get your three fast passes, don't go to Town Hall. Go further back into the park. Um, Heritage House, back by the Hall of Presidents, it's usually just a walk-on. We went into the Town Hall just to see what the line was like. And again, they were out the front door. So there are other places to get your fast passes. Don't go to the first place. Okay. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you, John. Kevin. Uh, Disney Cruise Line has changed the way you're going to be able to consume internet. This is crazy. They have gone from a time charge. You purchase a certain amount of time to be online to a certain amount of data that you'll be able to use. Um, it's now pay as you go. Pay as you go is tw uh, 25 25 cents per megabyte. The small package, 100 megabytes for $19, brings it down to 19 cents. The medium package is 300 megabytes for $39 or 13 cents. And the large, 1,000 megabytes, is $80 or 9 cents per megabyte. Wow. We the concierge guests in category S, T, and V will get 100 free megabytes of free internet. If the guest goes over, then the pricing above is, uh, applies. And concierge guests in Category R will get free internet for the length of the cruise. And what's going to happen <coughs> is people are going to be down at guest services screaming their heads off. Because do you know how many how many K the web page you're loading is? Uh, do or you know email. how many? Do you know what the what the size is? Do you can you j estimate the size of what that email is? No, of course not. I can't. I do this for a living. People are going to run over these limits, and people are going to freak out. This is an insane way of doing this on a cruise ship. That's insane. I understand that when you're dealing with satellite, when you're dealing with satellite, yeah, ban bandwidth is at a premium. And I know for a fact that Disney does have problems, or at least on the Magic and the Wonder. It's different on the Dream and the Fantasy because the ship has its own separate satellite system for its data versus what the guests use. But on the Magic and the Wonder, they don't. They have to share that with guests. And that's, a, that's been a problem where, you know, there are times where the Internet's slow for you. It's just as slow for them. But the, uh, th this is just an, it's an untenable way. Of 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 measuring this and making people pay for it, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be problematic for them. I Royal, no, I don't understand the logic behind it. Royal Caribbean does something similar, and it's actually ship to ship, which annoys me. Some ships have this kind of data plan. Some ships just have you pay for it, and that's it, and it's unlimited during your stay. One of the things that uh, I think is interesting is that they have the thousand megabyte plan for eighty dollars. We bought. A 500 meg plan on the Freedom. Freedom of the Seas that Kevin and I shared, and we did not use all of that data. So this 1,000 megabyte plan is kind of huge, I think. But well, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I know so, from like our events and we I mean, yeah, when we're there video posting video posting photos and video. Yeah. That's that'll but eat it up right there. We're talking about just regular work, yeah. checking emails, answering. Where emails. I do think it might be advantageous though is for people like me who forget to log out. Mm -hmm. And use up all your minutes in God, one session, I and, that. <laughs> and then go into more. And and you know they they're not going to give you a refund on it because you were logged in and you're going by the minute. That's one area where I could see it being mm -hmm. advantageous. It's supposed to be a new company too. I think it's called Connected C. Connected C, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be better supposedly. Now yeah, we'll see. See, all right. Thank you, Kevin. Kathy. Okay, this is um, DCL week for increases. The price for the shipboard nurseries will now be increasing to $9 per hour for the first child and $8 per hour for each additional child. Effective dates are 131 on the Magic, 21 on the Disney Dream, and 22 on the Disney Wonder and the Fantasy. If guests have pre booked their nursery time online at the previous rate, the rate will be honored for them. So just be aware now there's. A new charge. How much do we know? How much the increase is? What it went from to what it went to? Um, it was six dollars an hour before. So six to nine. Yeah, that's a big increase. It's a fifty yeah. percent increase. That's yeah. a huge increase, and it adds up. 
when you have two kids in there. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Daddy knows. Daddy mm-hmm. knows. We won't have to use that anymore. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Corey. I have the 2014 Flower Power Concert Series at the Flower and Garden Festival. Um, this features music from the 60s, 70s, and the show times are 5.30, 6.45, 8 o'clock. These happen on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. This, the first one is 3.7 through 3.09, the Guess Who. Then 3.14 through 3.16, Gary Lewis and the Playboys. They're new this year. 3.21 through 3.23 is the orchestra starring former members of ELO. Electric Light Orchestra. Yeah, it's ELO. <laughs> ELO. 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 It's JLO sister. L M F A O. Um, three twenty eight through three thirty is the Love and Spoonful. Four four through four six Paul Revere and the Raiders. Four eleven through four thirteen the Village People. They're always here. I think so. Um, four eighteen through four twenty the In Grand one room or another. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> four twenty five through four twenty seven Herman Hermits uh, starring Peter Noon. 5-2 through 5-4, Starship featuring Mickey Thomas. Woohoo! And 5-9 through 5-10, Chubby Checker and the Wildcats. 5-16 through 5-18, Alan Parsons Live Project. They're new this year. Well, so... I maybe. never go for the concerts. You just happen to walk up right. on it. Right, and you yeah. listen to them as you go by. Yeah, mm-hmm. Baby Boomers... Baby Boomers, one and all. The the only one I've ever been to, I went specifically to see Davy Jones a couple of years ago. Did oh, you I throw see. your underwear on, on stage? No. Oh. I also saw his uh, magic band. <laughs> his bra. I also saw Herman's uh, Hermits, and they were really good, too. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Corey. Over to you, Dustin. Yeah, I have... Uh, Pretty interesting uh, rapid fire. You're not going to believe this. Uh, Sophia the First and Doc McStuffins have uh, have. Who, re- who are these people? <laughs> They're Disney Junior characters. Um, they've they've replaced uh, the little Einsteins over at the Junior Junior Play and Dine at the Hollywood and Vine Restaurant. It's a character breakfast that they do over there. So uh, Sophia the First, what? Um, I think lesbian our, character. Our kids love. <laughs> our kids love both of them. <laughs> I think you owe me for that song. She's the Alan of this <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, yeah, they're 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 new characters, newer characters. They're very popular, Junior. So it's uh, it's good to see that they're uh, replacing them over at the, at the restaurant. We're gonna go check it out for Finley's birthday. Maybe we'll report back on it. <laughs> Great. Yeah, please. I'll be waiting with. Can you live tweet it? <laughs> we will. Yeah, I'll bring Craig along, video tape the whole thing. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dustin. You're welcome, Jonathan. All right, so they announced that they're bringing back the um, food booths for Flower and Garden. This year they're calling them outdoor kitchens, though, so that's kind of the way they're explaining them. Um, so if they needed to be <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll just call them outdoor kitchens. Um, in the Mexico Pavilion, they're going to have, um, I don't know how to say this in Spanish, Hardan de Fiestas, like Fiesta Garden. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a party garden. In French, it's Jardin, but I don't know. Lotus House in China. It's Hardin. Hardine? I guess. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I don't speak Spanish. Florida Fresh in Germany. So that's kind of like the local Florida food. Um, Italy will have the Primavera Kitchen. Um, my favorite is the Smokehouse Barbecue and Brews in the American Adventure Pavilion. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, I'm glad that's back. Hanami in Japan. Taste of Marrakesh in Morocco. Um, the France Pavilion will have Florida Lee. Um, Buttercup Cottage in the United Kingdom. And Pineapple Promenade at the Canada Pavilion. So, oh, and there's also one called Urban Farm Eats. Awesome. This was my favorite part about last year's uh, flower and flower and garden was the addition, like a, a real addition of these. They've had a few in the past, but it really felt like a, a mini food and wine. Yeah, uh, no, they did. I, I, I absolutely I thought, it. I thought that addition of the food kiosk to uh, flower and garden was brilliant. How'd you yeah. get through it without an explanation? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to call it. All right, thank you, Sean. Mm-hmm. Gregory. Uh, yeah, so on Thursday, February 20th, 2014, the Splitsville Luxury Lanes will have a dine around. Uh, it's a Table in Wonderland exclusive event. Uh, it's $90 per person from 6 to 8 o'clock p.m. You can go there. You'll get assigned to a bowling team. Uh, you can get made-to-order rice bowls, uh, sushi station, pizza slider station with cheeseburger sliders, filet sliders, margarita pizza, uh, meat lover's pizza, 
craft beer. So really, $90 wine. a person yeah. for pizza and burgers? That's and sushi. Bowling. And sushi. And craft beer. Yeah. And sake. <clears throat> but only two hours. And you get a I pair don't... of socks with it. Did I... you read that? <laughs> I didn't. You do. Oh, oh wow. okay. That makes it Used. Work. Everyone's excited. Well, Used socks. <laughs> yep. It's limited to 80 guests. Twitter versus a guy. Go- Everyone's a, a buzz. <laughs> <clears throat> and, uh... Booking begins January 31st, 10 a.m. I love Tables in Wonderland. <laughs> this one sounds tragic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Craig. You're welcome. Um, finishing up the show this week, um, we are going to announce the top 10 threads from 2013 on Disboards.com. I actually want to do this a couple of weeks ago, but believe it or not, swear to God, because of the volume of data on the analytics for Disboards, Google could not run it for a year. Um, we, I had to piece this together. I had to like break it up and piece it together, and it was really, really kind of. There was math involved. It was math and <laughs> annoying. Excel spreadsheets wow. <laughs> um, to figure out who truly what the what the true top ten threads of uh, 2013 were. Now uh, we had announced that uh, the top two threads were each going to get. A $500 Disney gift card, which we are obviously uh, going to do. But uh, all the top 10 uh, threads are going to receive a really nice uh, red leather uh, Disney travel oh, that's gift nice. pack. It's a nice diary and leather uh, luggage tag and really cool. Really, really nice uh, gift pack uh, to everybody who made the top 10 uh, for 2013. So let's start with number 10. Yes, touring Cinderella's Dream Suite was amazing by Emmy's Mommy. Number nine, Disney World Offer for Late Summer by Danny25. And uh, Danny uh, Danny definitely got the attention of uh, Walt Disney Travel with uh, his posts. Uh, the frightening accuracy of his, <laughs> mm-hmm. of his predictions. Um, yeah, we got phone calls. Yeah. And I had to say, get a subpoena. Sorry. And they didn't. So, um, so yes, that is a policy, by the way, that I don't care who you are or what's going on. If you want any information on anything posted on those boards, you better show me a subpoena. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. And so far, nobody's produced one. So there's that. Now I've said this. You know what's going to happen, <laughs> yeah. right? right? You know I'm going to get served. I see tomorrow. a man at the door. <laughs> um, number eight, the 2013 Free Dining Watch. Dimples 2013 CA was the poster on that, the original poster on that. Number seven, find your 2013 Fantasy Cruise Meet Link. I'm okay. <laughs> meet Link? <laughs> I really should have <laughs> reverted that. <laughs> um, well. By Irish Cowboy. <laughs> oh, <my>. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, and number six actually is also find your 2013 dream meet link um, <laughs> by Irish Cowboy. Um, oh my God. Um, and actually, we'll have to work something out with him so he doesn't get two sets. We'll see if we want yeah. something else. But uh, number, se- uh, number seven, number six goes to Irish Cowboy. Number five, uh, the new 2013 confirmed snacks thread Disney Daz. D-A-Z. Number four, I'm Stuck in Disney, a delightfully unlivable trip report by Disney Girl. And number three, probably one of the best posts ever put on Disboards.com, in my opinion. Everything about Walt Disney World tickets by Cheshire Figment. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the definitive guide to anything you want to know about tickets at Walt Disney World. He does an absolutely amazing job. An absolutely, absolutely amazing job. Um, that is number three. Um, number two, I was really happy to see this. Um, we actually did a segment based on this thread last year. Stateroom Mickey Ears and then some by iDrive Illumina. Uh, on the cruise board. Stop it. Um, Dustin was doing this thing last night. <laughs> I drive a Dodge Stratus. So, <laughs> Will Farrell bit, but I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. Um, but uh, it is such a great thread and has been very, very popular. And, uh, uh, you know, so I drive Illumina. We'll be getting a $500 Disney gift card wow. 
for being the number two thread. But it sure, surely comes as no surprise to anyone who has watched the show and followed our top ten threads every month that the number one thread of the year on Disboards.com, Disney College Program Frump Style by Disney Freak 508, our good friend Jess. And I will tell you that the... Uh, the top, the, the next five threads combined, next, mm-hmm. the next five, number two through six, did not do, or two through seven, did not do as much traffic, page views, wow. as, uh, as, this, as this thread did. Combined, huh? Um, yeah, combined. Um, it was a u- amazingly popular, amazingly popular. And the most popular thread we've ever had on Disboards.com. I'm very, very comfortable saying that. The yeah. amount of traffic it got was was absolutely uh, was absolutely unbelievable. And uh, we also have a show dedicated to the college program. Yeah, yeah. check it out. Jess was on the show. If you're on she, YouTube, scroll down. But uh, and of course, Jess will also be getting uh, a five hundred dollar Disney gift card. Um, we had to do. We had to do too because Jess was just winning every month. I mean, that thread was just winning, and I felt like you know, okay. This is this is a juggernaut. That was a juggernaut thread. That was just one that took off. People really grabbed onto it um, as she kind of went through her process in the college program and uh, posted about her experiences on the trip reports board. People just became intrigued. She has a great writing style. People really enjoyed it. Uh, but I felt like you know there was no room for anybody else. So I felt we should do it for the top two. And I'm really glad because uh, the stateroom Mickey ears thread. If uh, for those not familiar with that. Um, you can go on Disney Cruise Line and you see those, you know, those magnets on everybody's door they, that they decorate. A lot of them get their templates for those designs mm-hmm. and instructions on how to do it from that thread. And, uh, you know, it has just been it's just been tremendous, just been tremendous. And uh, um, I'm really glad I'm really glad that's the number two thread. Uh, you know, these are the kind of threads that really make the boards special. And, uh, you know, you've got a nice, a nice mix of uh, information, you know, that you need, whether it's about discounts or, you know, what the new updates to the snack program, uh, snack program is or um, the, uh, the meat threads on, uh, on the cruise line forum. And, you know, not all of these threads um, were, were started this year. Some threads have been ongoing for, for the longest time, right? I mean, like that Cheshire Figment one. Oh, yeah. he, he, start, yeah. he started that right when it turned into my, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the tickets all right. yeah, we only up. looked We only looked at traffic from January 1st to December 31st. We were not looking at traffic beyond that before or after. We were just looking at, you know, during the calendar year mm-hmm. yeah. last year, who were the, you know, who were the top threads. So if you want to read... Um, more about the top threads and and check them out uh we will be listing them of course on the show notes page desunplugged.com and that'll be going up with our show um tomorrow yeah wednesday so there it is top 10 threads on disports.com for 2013 and i am seven minutes early that's okay well you know before we go of course uh i want to mention again that uh you know, for you guys to check out our YouTube page. Um, again, Craig has uploaded a lot of videos on Universal, uh, especially all the Harry Potter stuff that has uh, happened recently. And again, I want to uh, mention that we do have a Universal show uh, coming up later this week. Uh, do you guys know exactly when that's going to be? You're planning on? Should be releasing it tomorrow night. There might be. Should be releasing it live. But okay. Well, <laughs> the one thing we were thinking about. Um, <laughs> Maybe hosting it at live stream at like seven o'clock tomorrow night. If so only I had talk. some authority to make that happen. Mm. I, I don't. Who who makes those decisions? <laughs> <laughs> Not me anymore. He does. Ka- Kathy. <laughs> no. no. We'll uh, we're we're trying to work out something fun to yeah, release. We'll figure it out. But, you know, whenever we know, we'll we'll tweet and stuff because that's how people get information out there. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Internet. <laughs> wow, really? They, they tweet and stuff. They tweet and stuff. Well said. They, well said. They insta spam. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this part of our show. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next time with another edition of the Dis Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember, stay out of the damn lakes. Uh,